All right, welcome everybody. You're watching our exclusive webinar with Broadbase and SharpSpring. Uh, we're gonna show you the most powerful digital marketing tool on the planet. Uh, and I know that I am uh, have a tendency, anyone that knows me, to uh, throw around some superlatives, but I, I really believe that, that SharpSpring deserves to be called the most powerful digital marketing tool. And um, you're gonna see why in this webinar. Very excited to be presenting today. Uh, I'm Chris with Broadbase, uh, EVP and partner. I'm joined today by Tim Pogge. He's a product support specialist at SharpSpring. Hey, Tim. Hey, everybody. All right. So let's go ahead and, uh, and dive right in. So quick table of contents. We're going to uh, just introduce ourselves real quickly, tell you a little bit more about what we do at Broadbase. And uh, Tim's going to tell you about SharpSpring and, and his role. Uh, then we're going to tell you what SharpSpring is and why it's so powerful. Uh, we've got a bunch of examples here that kind of just some, some things that I put together and um, turn it over to Tim then for a feature tour. Uh, and then we're going to wrap up with a quick Q&A. We've uh, had some people email in some questions prior to uh, doing this broadcast. So we'll go ahead and cover those. And um, as well, just some housekeeping notes. We are recording this, so um, you will get a copy, anyone that registered. And also this will be uh, on our website too and certainly share it on social media. So you'll be able to find it all over the place. So, okay, let's go ahead and jump right in. So just do a quick introduction. Uh, uh, Chris Romaglia, EVP and partner here at Broadbase Communications. I joined the agency about five years ago and uh, became a partner of the year after. So really lead all the digital strategies here at Broadbase. Um, we've uh, lucky to be celebrating 24 years in business and have done just a variety of different, you know, marketing uh, tactics and technologies. And um, I came on board to really uh, bring our digital up to speed and um, be able to offer tools like SharpSpring, uh, which is um, marketing automation, email marketing, uh, social media, uh, website lead generation, all kinds of different things that SharpSpring does and really is a cornerstone of um, what we're offering now at Broadbase. So Tim, why don't you uh, tell us about yourself a little bit? Yeah, thanks, Chris. I appreciate the uh, opportunity. Sure. So, uh, yeah, my name is Timothy Pogi, and I am the product special supervisor here at SharpSpring. I first came on board in uh, 2016 as a technical support representative, and uh, fortunately, I came into a company that uh, loves to prom promote from within and loves to see uh, individuals within that team grow. And so, I've been able to move from uh, tech support into a uh, management role with our, our tech support team and now helping with our project specialist team where we work with our partners like Chris in presenting webinars. We work with our partners in uh, running demonstrations for their clients as well as with our own sales team and our product teams. So I've been with SharpSpring now, as I said, for about four years and really uh, excited about the future opportunities to continue to grow within the organization and continue to help uh, partners like Chris and the broad-based team uh, as they bring on new customers. Absolutely. And, and, and we appreciate you attending as well, Tim. Thank you so much. And uh, I can just go ahead and brag on Tim for a minute. He um, has done all the most of the support for um, since we've onboarded with SharpSpring and really is a major reason why um, that, you know, his support and, and just overall the way that SharpSpring structures onboarding um, and, and, you know, kind of holding your hand throughout the entire process is one of the biggest reasons we elected to move forward with SharpSpring and, um, you know, the support they've had during the COVID-19 crisis, which, you know, we're, we're recording this in um, early, uh, early May here. We're still kind of, you know, easing back into things, but, um, you know, the fact that they made themselves so available, both virtually uh, as well as, you know, all the different support channels they offer is one of the key reasons, again, why we went with this. And I think anybody that's ever used a software tool, um, one of the biggest kind of make or break things, in addition to the technology, can be that support. And uh, I think, Tim, you guys have done a tremendous job and uh, really appreciate that. I hope you can pass that along to the rest of your team. Oh, you know I will. <laughs> all right. Good deal. So again, I'm kind of jumping in. What is SharpSpring and what makes it so powerful? So SharpSpring is a sales and marketing platform that helps you drive leads into your funnel, helps you nurture them to close them into deals, uh, and then you can create referrals and upsell opportunities. So really, it's a, it's a they, I guess you would position it, Tim, if I'm not wrong, as a, a marketing automation tool. Is that correct? Yeah, marketing automation tool with a fully uh, functional and built-in CRM. Yeah, so I mean, I definitely, marketing automation is, is probably the core of what this system does, but it really is just a lead generation machine. Um, and, and when you compare it to some of the other tools out there, the amount of features that it has, in addition to how easy it is and how flexible it is um, to use, you know, a lot of the other solutions that we've, we've looked at for marketing automation, it's really like you have to go all in um, and, and build everything around it. Whereas SharpSpring, you can just attach it to everything you're doing, it's super flexible um, and doesn't have those like long, you know, startup times and, um, you know, big investments and commitments that you need to make. It's just really close to ready to go out of the box. And um, they're just really easy to jump on board with, which we've really enjoyed. 
Uh, so just some of the features, anonymous visitor ID, so you can you know, immediately tell who's on your website uh, by doing some reverse lookup technology. Uh, you can send emails based on their behavior. So one of the biggest things, um, especially in 2020 with, with what we're dealing with now, um, with the pandemic, is you have to be really specific and really show a lot of empathy into you know what people are doing and and not have those generic you know bulk conversations um, and SharpSpring allows you to do that and, and do it at scale which is so important um, when you're trying to build those efficiencies and it tracks everything that you do uh, everything that, that you know the traffic on your website is doing which again one of the biggest questions we get at Broadbased is you know Chris I, I know that you know we're doing Google ads we're doing Facebook ads we're doing SEO we're doing email marketing all these different ways of driving qualified traffic to our website really don't have an accurate you know picture of which one of those things is converting and not only what they're converting but are they bringing in the quality of lead that we want and SharpSpring is just a perfect fit for all of that and, and we're going to show those features in depth in a little while here so really the the main reason that SharpSpring is so effective is the way that we buy things has changed uh, and it's been changing for a long time and you know social media has had a big impact uh, mobile devices and, and the amount of, of things that we're doing on mobile has changed uh, and just overall so many people are using the internet to research and and educate themselves before they make decisions uh, and that's where really sharp spring comes in and I'll, I'll give you a real world example from you know my uh, my personal life when i got married in 2003 uh, one of the first things we did my wife and i we bought a home uh, so the way we went about that is uh, we opened up the newspaper and we, we saw what you know listings were out there uh, we even watched, uh, there was a, a Comcast channel, which I think they still have, uh, but it showed all the listings that were in different zip codes and we would watch it every weekend. And you know, it was really like appointment viewing. And that, that's kind of how you found, you know, the houses that you were interested in, made a lot of phone calls. Um, so again, there really wasn't, you know, you wouldn't get a good response on email. Uh, not many people were text messaging back then. So really the phone was the only avenue you had and you had to leave a lot of voicemails and they'd call you back and then you'd, you'd get your voicemail. So it wasn't the most convenient way to do it. Then you had to hop in the truck and just drive around and actually look at the different homes because the websites really didn't have updated photos or they weren't high quality photos. So a lot different than it is now and kind of fast forward about nine years, um, had our second child decided, all right, we're ready to get a bigger house. Um, so let's go ahead. Now we got websites we can look at. So we don't have to make all those phone calls and um, you know get all our questions answered. We could do that on the web. Um, obviously email was a key way to stay in touch. It was very convenient, particularly you know if you could just send emails from your phone. Um, if you had to be at work all day, which is when a lot of that stuff happens, um, you're able to stay updated and, and connect via email and then social media. So we can go online, we can kind of, you know, ask our friends and family and, and find out, you know, what do y'all recommend? Have you, have you looked in this neighborhood? Have you looked at this particular home builder? Um, you know, read reviews and, and different things. And so a lot had changed in that time where if you were marketing to me to buy a home back in 2003 uh, versus 2012, you would have done it in a lot of different ways with a lot of different tools. And then kind of fast forward, this was just last year when um, we were interested in, in getting an investment property, everything was done remotely. So the, the realtor actually carried their phone around the property and, and did a FaceTime tour um, because we couldn't be there to see it. Um, we e-signed all the documents and disclosures versus you know having to send those back and forth on email, which anyone that's ever done that is not the most convenient process. Uh, and then the closing was done virtually as well. And we just mailed the documents back. So you can kind of see you know in, in almost a 20 year span how much that experience changed. And I think anybody that, you know, buying a car or, um, you know, any kind of major purchase, you know, throughout the course of your life, how much technology has changed what that process looks like. And SharpSpring is a perfect fit as what we can call, you know, the modern buyer. Um, and here's some statistics that support this. 96% of people that visit your website aren't ready to convert. They're not ready to pick up the phone and call you. They're not ready to submit a contact form uh, in large part because they know once they do that, you know, there's a chance they're going to get put on a list and, and start getting bombarded with, again, those bulk communications that, you know, really don't personalize the experience and don't address their specific pain points. 81% uh, on four out of five, they don't want to talk to a salesperson right away. So for 15 years of my career, my background was sales. So this is a very difficult statistic to hear, uh, but it's the truth. I mean, a lot of us can, can, can say that, you know, when we go on a website and you start seeing all the different things pop up, you may not re be ready to have that initial consultation. You're there to educate yourself learn more about the company um, and go about the buying process on your terms versus, you know, again, 20 years ago, the, the whole buying process was dictated by the salesperson's terms or, or the organization's terms because you couldn't go and get the information you wanted or needed uh, without their help. You needed them to give you those brochures or flyers and everything else. Now it's all online and it's all accessible to the, to the buyer. Uh, and this is a new buyer's journey. 
And again, SharpSpring is what bridges the gap between the way we used to buy things and the way we're doing it now. And a lot of companies and brands are ignoring that. And they're still selling like 2003, where they think they're in control of the process. And they're really not. And that's where a tool like SharpSpring comes in so handy. Um, again, these are just some of the features here, the, the main ones, um, but email marketing, landing pages, the forms on your website, all of these things tie together um, in one tool with, uh, and Tim's going to show you the interface here in a second, super user friendly, where it just gives you the reporting to know exactly what's working, what your prospects are doing, uh, and what's working the most to convert them to leads. Uh, it has a full function CRM. All your analytics are integrated with um, you know all the different tools that you use they have great integrations at SharpSpring and yeah, they don't have it out of the box they can customize it uh, again we talked about the visitor ID so you know when your prospects are coming back to your website and who they are and you can even syndicate content with uh, through your blogs and one thing I think oh yeah social media is on here as well so when you're distributing these different pieces of content you can push them immediately to your social sites you can push them to your blog and uh, again all that's tracked so you know if you know prospect a is uh, clicking on your social media posts if they're reading your blog posts consuming that content and you get all that additional insight about okay well this person is really driven to purchase by you know they want to consume content about you know the, the different features that we offer versus maybe the price they're not as price sensitive so it really gives you that layer of insight that again just i've been doing this a long time i've never seen a tool that does it all with uh with one interface so tim i'll go ahead and uh Hopefully I can get this right on the webinar. I'll turn over the screen sharing and um, we can take everybody inside the dashboard and show them where the magic happens. Absolutely. Let's dive right in. And first, hey, Chris, you know, thank you for giving into that intro. I think that you really hit on a number of points here that are, uh, are things that people really can take home. And, you know, at a personal level, understanding that, you know, I don't want to be contacted by a salesperson right away. I think that's something that everyone can relate to. And I think that's where a tool like SharpSpring can really help uh, complete your sales and marketing process. And so as kind of Chris said, you know, SharpSpring is a tool that is built to help drive leads, convert those leads to sales, and ultimately understand your ROI. And we're able to do that because we're starting to take those initial marketing initiatives and tying those to our leads that are living in our solution, and then following that lead through their entire life journey and buying cycle. And so that's what, a little bit what we're going to see within the SharpSpring solution. So the first thing that we're seeing here right now is our launch pad. So when you're first getting set up within your SharpSpring account, as you're logging in, one of the first things you're gonna be uh, promoted with and seeing in, in your instance is gonna be our launch pad, which is gonna be a combination of custom reporting dashboards that you have the capability to build out at a individual user level and then have tied into your launch pad. So when you're logging in first thing of the day, what you're being promoted with is the information that is pertinent to your job, to your role, to make sure that you're being able to be successful. But you're also gonna see tied into that things like our task manager. So we can see what to do's we have coming up for the day, for the week, or for the month. Uh, what types of tasks those are, whether those are phone calls, emails that need to be uh, followed up on, uh, maybe a, uh, a meeting or something along those lines. And then finally, your activity feed, which will really start to give you insight on the different leads that are on your website and how they're engaging, what they're engaging with. Whether that be something like an email open, a website visit, a form fill, engagement with a chatbot, all these different types of activities will start to be included here within your activity feed. So again, as a user, when you're first logging in, you're seeing the reporting that matters, you're seeing the tasks that you need to accomplish, and you're seeing the activity by the leads that you're actively working with so that you can make sure that you're following up with those folks in a timely and uh, effective manner. And so, Tim, uh, real quick, something I could add to this is, again, with the sales background, you can set notifications to those um, activities. So, for instance, if you've got a prospect that, that cooled off on you and, you know, kind of a month went by maybe and, and you haven't heard anything, they're not, you know, engaged with you. And then all of a sudden they decide, you know what, I, I really need to get back in touch with Broadbase. And, and I remember we need to move that forward. If they go back to the website, uh, you can get an, I'll get a notification that says, you know, Joe Smith has, has returned and visited these pages. So that kind of tells me like, okay, maybe they're back interested now. And this is something I need to follow up on, which is just an incredibly powerful feature. Um, you know, when you look at it from a sales perspective that kind of merges, you know, we always hear, how do we close the gap between sales and marketing? I think that's a great example of, of how this tool can do that. 100%, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that's kind of a theme that we're gonna notice as we go throughout the solution is that, that the tool is really going to enable you on a number of factors, but I think the most important one is understanding uh, when and where your folks are engaging with you. And that can really help 
uh, shape how you communicate and when you communicate. You know, what message are you sharing and is it the appropriate message given the time, the date and how they're engaging? Uh, so 100%, Chris, I think that that really uh, nails it and uh, hits it on a T is that that's what the solution will really start to empower you to do. So one thing that we're going to notice with SharpSpring is that SharpSpring is split into two halves. We're see that kind of reflected in our navigation of the solution. And so what we see currently is our sales half. So we see things like your contacts, your accounts, your sales opportunities. This is that CRM half of the op application. Yep. But we're also going to see the marketing tools. So those content creation tools, uh, landing pages and forms, the blog builder, all these things will live here on the, uh, the marketing side as well as where you start to build out those automations. And we talked about this being a marketing automation solution. Your automations will begin to live under that marketing side of the solution. So Chris and I uh, put together a little bit of a couple of things that we thought would be pertinent today. And the first thing that I want to touch on as we're talking about the solution and kind of giving you a quick insight into what we see here is going to be our visitor ID uh, tool. So from a navigational standpoint, you're always going to see that living both under marketing and sales under that visitor ID option. And we placed that there for a specific reason. We think that this is a tool that is pertinent both to your marketing team, but also to your sales team. As Chris said, as a salesperson, that background in sales, it's important to understand who's engaging and when they're engaging, be able to get those uh, in real time updates. And yeah, so that's what that. this tool is. I'm sorry to interrupt. I check that yeah, every day. It's like, I feel like a kid on Christmas. I mean, we're one of the first things I do when I log on to my laptop every morning is go in here and, and kind of see, okay, who's been on the website? Who's, who's checking us out? It's, um, it's just a great, you know, again, just to see, um, and, and know confidently like, okay, these people are still in, they're still interested. They're still in the funnel. Um, and, and even if there's a new, uh, opportunity that comes along, you can identify it so early on in the process, which, uh, there's a lot of studies out there that show you the quicker you respond to those things, um, your chances of actually winning them as a prospect just skyrocket. So super important feature. Absolutely. I, and so let's kind of set the, the framework a little bit, how this really starts to work. And a lot of you folks will probably be familiar with some of these concepts is that we're going to put uh, some tracking script, tracking cookie onto your website. And so that when somebody visits your website, we're going to append that cookie to their, uh, their device, whether that's their Google Chrome browser or their cell phone, et cetera. And then we're going to try and connect that uh, cookie to a unique lead record in the solution. And so how the visitor ID is going to be a tool as a marketer, uh, it's going to help you know who is on your website, again, where they're at, but also as a salesperson, who's on the website, where are they at? And we're going to start to see a collection of both anonymous information, a little bit of information about those visitors we've not been able to identify yet, but also a lot of that information about your known track leads. And these are folks who maybe they have filled out a form, maybe they've engaged with your chat bot, maybe you've sent them an email and they click through from that email to your website. There are all different ways that we can now establish that tracking. And so the visitor ID tool is going to give us some of that insight. Now, one thing to note with this tool is that we can get both uh, daily or weekly emails into our inbox, letting us know which visitors are visiting our site uh, with your different sales or uh, marketing roles within the solution. You'll be able to focus in on the leads that are specific to you as a user or all of the individuals if you're up there at administrative level. And then what we're going to start to see is going to be things like a hyperlink to their lead record within the solution. Uh, if it's a known lead, their email address, their phone number, all of that type of information, as well as getting insight into what pages they visited on this initial session, and then what pages they visited historically. So just looking at Jamie here in this example instance, we can see that Jamie uh, at uh, 2.09 p.m. visited five different SharpSpring pages. And then we can look back and go even further two hours ago, she was on our website and visited 11 different pages. So the visitor ID tool can give you real time updates to let you know exactly what pages people are visiting. And this really should be a tool that can empower your marketing and your sales efforts. Again, we wanna make sure that our communication is effective, it's targeted, and that we're using these types of tools effectively. So I think it's a great example. If you look at number four on the top there, the HubSpot pricing and review. So again, this goes back to what I was saying, this, this individual, Jamie, we know that, you know, and I know you guys do a great job at SharpSpring with your outreach, but we know that's a hot button for Jamie. It's like, okay, I, I'm comparing this product to HubSpot. So, you know, your, um, your, your rep that does the outreach can say, okay, this is something I definitely want to touch on when we have that conversation. So again, just really tying in the marketing and sales just so seamlessly. And I mean, anybody that's watching this, I mean, this is just like a goldmine, right? To marketers to, to see all the different, you know, interactions they've had on the website. 
um, just super valuable information. So uh, one of the, my favorite features about the whole tool. Yeah. The next thing that I think Chris and I thought would be powerful to kind of talk through today is the lead record and kind of understanding what information starts to live within the lead record, and how it can begin to utilize that. Again, the overarching message here is effectively targeting, effectively communicating. And I think the lead record really starts to hone in on that. So for, again, from a navigational standpoint, I'm someone who loves to show how you can navigate through the app, show that ease of use. Our contact records are all going to live under your contacts tab here in the left hand corner under contact manager. And this is going to be something that again, lives on both halves of the application as it's applicable both to your marketing and your sales efforts. So to use an example record, we're going to look at Ian here. Now what we're going to see at the lead records and a lot of different aspects. First, we're going to see all of your system standard fields. So you think of things like uh, your first name, your last name, phone number, email, all of those things will begin to live here within the lead record there on that left hand side. We're going to start to see things like their lead scoring, which is something we're not going to go into too much today, but you can actually start to assign a uh, lead score, a numerical value for a, a lead uh, based off of how they've engaged, and what information they've shared. And then that will now be displayed prominently within your lead record. We'll see which social platforms you've been able to effectively tie the lead record to. We'll be able to log notes as well as phone calls or use features such as our sales dialer feature, which will enable you to actually log calls directly from the lead record book time with leads and actually integrate your Office 365 or Gmail calendar with the solution. Send emails that have been pre-built from the solution directly to a lead record so that I can make sure that as I'm having a conversation around, uh, let's say a sales opportunity, that I have the email content that I need to get out to my different individuals. So again, talking about HubSpot, our SharpString versus HubSpot comparison analysis guide. Perfect example, yeah. And then what else will we see here? Well, we're gonna see a lot of different things. One simple thing that I'll touch on for a brief moment is that green bell in the right-hand corner. So what that is is an auto notify bell. And by clicking that bell, all I'm doing is telling the solution that anytime Ian returns to our website, his lead owner should get an email notification telling him he's on the site. So that really is a tool that can now empower your sales team because they're getting real-time updates as to when people are engaging where they're engaged. So you're not just seeing in the visitor ID section, you're actually seeing it for this specific lead and how and when he engages. So that now we can make sure that, oh, Ian is a hot lead with a 262 lead score. Let's make sure that we're reaching out to him in an appropriate fashion when we're top of mind and not two or three or four weeks later when he's already made his purchasing decision. That's awesome feature. Absolutely. Now we can also hyperlink directly to your sales opportunity we'll see all of the different custom fields and sharp string is going to enable you to create unlimited custom fields. So if it's not information that you can collect natively within the solution, you'll be able to collect it and store that in a custom field. But I think one of my favorite features, and I know I can speak for Chris when I say this is the life of the lead. Now the life of the lead is essentially a linear view of every point of interaction we're having with a lead. Uh, from the first interaction, whether that's a form fill or whether that is uh, via an import to the present. And so we're going to see that depicted here. And we're going to see that, for example, in Ian's uh, case, we have a form fill on the 19th of April. We then have backfilled his web visit. So when I was describing how the tracking works, this is how it starts to play together is that we dropped the cookies on his device when he first visited and then he filled out that form. And we've now tied the tracking cookie to that specific lead record. So we can see form fill and the web visits that day, but also his web visits a week prior. So on his initial visit, we know what source drove him to us and we know every page that he interacted with. And now that life of the lead is going to give you that linear view, that holistic view, not just of how he engages with you, but how your team engages with him. Whether those are things like one-to-one -one emails that have been sent from your team's uh, Gmail or Outlook or uh, Yahoo mailbox. Whether that is opportunities that have been created for this individual. Whether that is email clicks, opens, and corresponding web visits. We'll see things like chatbot interactions living here. Phone calls that have been logged. All of these are different touch points that will help you really begin to understand your audience, understand the lead, and understand how you can be more effective now communicating, 
but also how has my team communicated historically? Are we putting out a message that reflects our values? Well, now you have the transparency that you may not have otherwise to really begin to understand those different points of contact and how we can now move this relationship forward, how we can get this person from a prospect to a customer. Yeah, I think this is, again, you mentioned earlier, one of my favorite features. And, and I think the reason why is like I keep saying, it shows you the, the real path that someone takes to become a lead. And there's so many different touch points now. Like I said, the, the buyer's journey has changed. We don't just go to the website and pick up the phone and call to set an appointment or buy something, which you know, it'd be great if, if we did. <laughs> um, but there's just such a different path to purchase now. And this particular tool, the life of the lead, shows you every step and every source. So if someone comes in through a Google ad, doesn't convert. Then they come back through, you know, we, we retarget them on Facebook and they, they come back, they don't convert. So then we send them a follow-up email. Finally, we get them. Um, and it shows you, so you know, moving forward, like, okay, this is the path that, you know, our customers are taking and um, we need to kind of build our process around that. And, and again, that kind of insight is just so valuable uh, to any sales organization. And uh, certainly it's, it's, it's helped us tremendously. Absolutely. So another tool that you're going to find in your arsenal when you're using a marketing automation solution like SharpSpring is going to be our new, one of our newest features and one of the ones that I'm most excited about, and that's our chatbot feature. Now, we've probably all seen a chatbot to one extent or another living on somebody's website. It's a little automation, automated bot that enables you to begin to interact directly uh, with a automation system and starts to maybe take you down the right pathway. You know, am I looking for more information? Do I want to speak with a salesperson? Well, within SharpSpring, you're actually going to be able to build out those chatbots. And we're going to see that again under marketing chatbots here. And we're going to start to see something like this built out. Now, this is a little bit of an intricate chatbot, right? We can this see a lot of different things that are happening here. And SharpSpring is going to enable you to start to see how this is going to look right out of the gate. So, hey there, welcome back. What can I help you with? Well, which of these two options or which one of these four options, excuse me, am I going to choose? Well, these are all going to start to correspond to the different outputs that we see here. So what can I help you with? Well, I'm ready to learn more. That's gonna take you down one pathway. I'm looking for support. That'll take you down a different pathway. And you'll begin to be able to build out different questions and then responses, and then map out the pathway an individual will go down so that they can engage with that chatbot, get pushed to the right individual or to the right information and then effectively be logged into your new CRM solution and follow it up with effectively. Again, one of the most important things here is making sure that no ball gets dropped and that we're consistently following up with those leads as they're coming in. And I think that every business, every organization uh, has probably experienced that struggle historically. It's, hey, somebody came in, they filled out a form for more information and somebody dropped the ball. Well, now, because this is all part of a integrated solution, that ball isn't going to get dropped anymore. Yeah, everything's tied to set up there. Exactly. We have that full range, that full view of every point of interaction, and we can set up automation to begin to correspond and make sure that people get the appropriate experience uh, per the, the needs that they have expressed. And that kind of ties into one other thing that I want to touch on, and that's going to be our visual workflow builder. So similar to what we see with this chatbot is the ability to build out automations. Let's say somebody fills out a form. What are the next actions that we want to correspond with? And so SharpSpring is gonna have this visual workflow builder. That again, goes under our automation visual workflows. And this is where we can begin to build out those uh, automated uh, marketing workflows as well as sales workflows. So every workflow is gonna start with a trigger, which is a kind of an initiation point. And that can be anything from someone who visits from a specific email, or they have a field get update on their lead record. If they perhaps have an opportunity, a sales opportunity, move into the next stage of your sales process, they fill out those forms. These are all different triggers that we can now utilize to initiate a set of actions. We're going to have a second layer that we call a filter. That filter is going to help push them down the right pathway. So if they fill out a form and they say, my name is Tim, well, I can make sure they go down one pathway. Whereas if they come in and they fill out a form, they say, my name is Chris, I can have them go down another pathway. Now that's obviously a simple example, but we can start to uh, change the experience, change the flow that an individual goes through based off of the information that they're sharing with us, as well as the engagement points that we're seeing in that life of lead. We can now see how we can filter them down the right pathway based off of those as well. 
So Tim, I think, um, I'll jump in real quick. One of the things I, I love that SharpSpring does on, on your website is um, you always have a question. I think it's like, my role can best be described as, and then there's a bunch of things you can select from. So, and it's usually like job title related, if I, if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah. And what's great about that is then, so as a marketer, you know, okay, if this person is a CEO um, or if this person is, you know, like an IT director or whatever the different, you know, whatever your product is, you want to market to them differently, right? Those people have different pain points. They have, you know, different concerns. Um, they're looking for different value propositions. And, you know, if you don't know that information and you only sell to them one way, it goes back into what we talked about earlier in the, in the presentation. You're really not taking advantage of, of, you know, the way that people are, are buying things now. So this is one of the, the best ways as you can see building these different branches with the filters. Um, and it's so easy. Like I keep saying, I, I went in here and, and, and did one of these. I've used a lot of these tools before to build those funnels and workflows. And um, this is far and away the easiest one. Um, as you can see, Tim's just zipping through this and a lot of it's drag and drop. And um, again, whether you're a lay person or you're highly technical, um, you can get these spun up very quickly um, where they're, you know, obviously uh, generating leads as soon as possible. And as you guys can see, as uh, Chris was talking, one of the things that I did is I created a new filter, which created that new pathway for that person to go through. So in this case, someone comes in, they self-identify, they say, hey, this I is my role. Myself. Yeah. yeah, I would describe myself as, well, I work for a marketing agency. Well, let me make sure that the message that I send, that the uh, lead ownership, all those things get assigned automatically. And so this can really start to tie in both into your marketing as well as your sales funnel, because not only can we begin to create uh, those those different flows, but we can then begin to have those play into your sales process. So we can see that our lead ownership gets assigned, send them notifications, but also actions such as creating an opportunity automatically using an automation so that it goes right into your sales pipeline. And this is where that CRM component starts to play in because what we've seen is a lot of the marketing side tools, how they start to tie into sales. But now we look at it and we can see our sales pipeline, the ability to have multiple pipelines, to be able to have different lead owners, all being able to have access to the pipeline, filter by that, to be able to filter by time ranges, as well as to sort by specific names. Now, what we're going to see here is a, a very simple pipeline. I made it to be that simple as a customer meeting, a quote, and a contract, three stages. This could be one stage, this could be a hundred stages. What matters is what is your sales process and can we replicate that in the solution? Now, once we've been able to do that, we're gonna see a system that has a drag and drop interface. So simply by dragging and dropping that opportunity card, and that's what we refer to any chance to sell a product or service as an opportunity. By simply dragging and dropping that to the next stage, we're now being able to manage multiple sales relationships at once and have a very easy to understand view of which stage of our uh, process they're at. Now, we're going to click on Dr. Pogi Inc. here for a brief moment and begin to stay, be able to take a look at what's going to be inside. And what we're going to start to see here are things like what's the value of the opportunity? When do we expect this opportunity to close? What custom fields are associated here? What products are associated with this sales opportunity? What is our chance or probability to close based off of the stage of your pipeline that this is? We're going to get insight into things like what contacts are associated with the sales opportunity. And the system will not only have the individual that you create the opportunity with, but also will suggest other individuals based off of similar characteristics. We're going to get an overview of all of our notes, uh, as well as all of our communication. So we can start to have and manage all of this under one environment. All of this will start to have that transparency. So that I know every different relationship, again, that I'm managing, I know all of the different communications that we've had with these different relationships. And I can take a look again, all the contacts, the communication with these folks, our notes on these opportunities, and ultimately, hopefully, get to the point where I'm taking this and I'm saying, hey, we're crossing that finish line. We're winning this sales opportunity. Let's go ahead and move this to a close one sales opportunity. And this is what I think really puts the bow on a solution like Sharp Spring. This is where we kind of bring in that ROI aspect. Mm -hmm. And this is our tool that we call campaign. So this is a tool that when you're creating your new marketing initiative, you're going to create that as a campaign within the solution. And that way, when someone comes to you from that, we can start to track which of these are being the most effective. Right. How much are we spending on this new marketing outreach? 
how many leads have come from it? How many sales have we gotten from it? How many loss out sales loss have we had from this? What's our total revenue? SharpSpring is going to be able to start to enable you to get that insight because we're tying every dollar spent on a marketing initiative to actual leads in the system to actual deals closed. And I think that's what really begins to kind of tie the bow, as I said, really closes the loop here is that we get that end to end uh, understanding that end to end experience and we can begin to make better business decisions because they're based in data and not based off of a hunch. Yeah, it takes the guesswork out. And that's, you know, when 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 I when I position SharpSpring and, and introduce it to clients, this is what I tell them is, you know, we can stop finally stop guessing uh, and know, you know, confidently what's working. Can you scroll up a little bit, Tim, please? Absolutely. So I love, you know, and, and another question, you know, we get all the time is, okay, so if we if we partner with you at Broadbase, um, how are you going to track, you know, are the return on our investment, the ROI? And if you look at that top line there, you can see 19,769 leads, cost per lead, how many turn opportunities, how many of those opportunities turn to sales, and then the estimated value of the entire pipeline uh, against the cost that it took to, to build that pipeline. So, I mean, in one screen, you <laughs> essentially answered one of the, the biggest questions that any marketer keeps them up at night. Um, and, and again, you know, know confidently, okay, look, um, these are the different campaigns that are converting to revenue. We can, you know, either slow down on the other ones or stop them all together and reroute that budget into these, uh, the ones that are working. Uh, and it's also a great way to test because, um, again, that's another question we get as well. We've heard about doing this type of advertising or this type of campaign. It's like, okay, let's let's install this the right way. You know, let's not just do it kind of flying by the seat of our pants. Let's get this in set up properly uh, so we can show you within, you know, a month, two months, three months, however long we think is relevant to get the, the right amount of data and confidently say, yes, this works or say, you know, it's good that we tried this, but probably want to keep that budget where it was. Uh, and, and then SharpSpring gives you the ability to do that. Um, so it's, again, just another really good feature of this tool. Yeah. Chris, do you want to hop into some of those questions that you had come through? Some, some questions that we had come in, you know, one of the most popular questions we get with um, any new uh, tool or, or tactic that we introduce is people want to know how much it costs. So when, when I kind of, you know, I promoted this and, and sent it out through through RE Blast and, and done, you know, promotion on my own to, to kind of get people fired up about SharpSpring and they always say, well, everything sounds great, but We've looked at other marketing automation solutions. We know, you know, some of them were, were pretty expensive and, and not only expensive, they, they required us to go like at least one year commitment, which again, just like we talked about, you're not always ready to make that level of commitment until you see, you know, that it works and you want to see the proofs in the pudding. Um, so one of the, the, again, to answer that question really depends. I know that nobody likes to hear that response, but I would say, you know, the floor of starting with SharpSpring from, you know, a setup aspect is, you know, maybe a couple thousand dollars to get it set up. Uh, and then from there on a rolling month to month, you know, depending on, on how involved we're doing it, uh, we can start for as low as five, six hundred dollars a month, um, which when you compare this to other solutions is uh, considerably less uh, of an investment and, in, in, you know, a budget commitment. So and, and again, it's month to month. So it's one of those things. Obviously, the setup is we need to get in there. Um, and, and put the, the visitor live, or the, um, I should say the uh, visitor ID on the site, the life of the lead, all those things need to be configured um, and set up a few workflows and tie the forms together. Um, but once you do that, I mean, it's rolling month to month and, and you can immediately see you know, the return on that investment. So again, like I always like to say, uh, which may sound like a salesman type of line, uh, but don't think of what you're paying, think about what you're getting. Uh, and that's where the value comes in. And for, for those types of prices, you know, couple thousand dollars to set it up and then you know five six hundred again as a floor to get it up and running per month um you know if you're if you start converting leads for those uh price points i think that anybody would call that a win um so that's uh that's a really how i'd respond to that and obviously you know to give you a firm estimate of what that is um just let us know we can we can put together you know, do a demo find out exactly what your needs are and uh, give you a very accurate accurate quote from there uh, another question that i got in is um you know, again, how does this compare to some other marketing automation solutions? I think we talked about the cost. Uh, we talked about the commitment level. Um, I would say, you know, and, and Tim spoke really well on this um, when he had the screen share up is, you know, the fact that all of the tools that we need as marketers to, to be a part of that buyer's journey and, and to tailor our approach to, to how we're buying things now, all of those are in SharpSpring. He talked about chat, uh, chat bots. He talked about landing pages. So in the past, you had to have what's called a technology stack where it's all these different tools and you have to manage them independently. They all have their own price points. Um, SharpSpring has all of that included. So I think that's one of the main reasons. Tim, I know you've 
kind of talk with me about how to position Sarver Spring. What are some of your thoughts on um, how it compares to some of the other tools? Yeah, no, that's a it's a great question. It's one that I get uh, from our partners and from their clients all the time. And you know, I think when it comes down to we're we're going to look at a feature parity, you're going to see a lot of similarity between Sharp Spring and our competition. But where I think we really uh, get separated from the pack, if you will, is how we handle our relationship with our agency partners. Uh, Sharp Spring and really all of these technologies can be a little bit scary for some folks. But why we really kind of separate ourselves is that we specifically partner with uh, marketing agencies so that they can take their background, their expertise, their knowledge, and really begin to put that to work into this solution with you and for you. So that at the end of the day, you're not looking at this mountain of uh, technology you have to learn, but instead you're looking at a partnership between a technology, a software, uh, and that agency and their expertise. And I think that really separates us because at the end of the day, um, we aren't going to interfere with your relationship with folks like Chris and, and the broad-based team. Instead, we empower them to utilize a comprehensive set of tools on your behalf. And I think that really, at the end of the day, is what separates us from the pack. You know, if we go line by line by features, you're going to see a lot of similarity. If you look at platforms like Trust Radius, who go out and rate all these platforms, you're going to see us right there with the largest uh, platforms in the industry. We're a Trust Radius award winner for at least two years running now. So you're going to see that the quality is there. But what we bring to the table that they don't is that relationship. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Tim. It's um, and I've already talked about you know the onboarding experience with with you all, and it's just top notch. I mean, the worst is when you you partner with a software company or you know something like this, and it's just kind of like they throw everything at you. And it's like, all right, give us a call if you need some help. Um, I mean, you guys, and I, I think a lot of it is part of you're you're taking advantage of your own. You drink your own Kool Aid. Let's put it that way. And a lot of the communications I get. I, it's like, I have to guess, is this one automated or did this really come from <laughs> my rep? And I think that's part of it is that it's the accountability is there because, you know, SharpSpring understands, because again, it's a month to month deal. Um, if, if it's not working and it's not performing, then, you know, you might have to have a conversation you don't want to have. So it really keeps everyone on their toes. Whereas if you lock in for an entire year, you can say, well, you know, look, they're kind of stuck with us, so we can let them coast a little bit. It's not the mm -hmm. case with SharpSpring. And I, you know, that's been our approach at Broadbase. So I think it's, it's a really good fit for how, how we do it. Um, and again, this is something that, you know, is very refreshing uh, for those of us that have used these types of software tools in the past. Um, so we've had some other questions. I'd say, you know, a lot of them, you know, the main question I got was how much it costs. Uh, and then also what's different, you know, we got a question on how long it takes to set up. I mean, you can be up and running with this fairly quickly, I'd say within a few weeks, um, maybe even quicker, depending. Again, it depends on what you want to be able to do with the tool. And just to get out of the gate and use some of the most powerful features it offers, that can be done very quick. We get the script installed on your website, set up some of those automations and um, the integration piece with your uh, with your website itself, um, and we can be up and we can hit the ground running very quickly. Um, again, a lot of these other tools it can take months to get all the different things in place. Sometimes you even have to build your whole website using the platform, whereas SharpSpring, you know, it's that single line of code. It's, it's almost like Google Analytics. You just paste it in there. Um, and a lot of the integrations happen right quickly. So that's how I'd answer that question. And obviously any other questions, you know, we've responded already, you know, separately outside the webinar, but if you have any, feel free to reach out. And um, again, we do have an, an offer for anybody that's, that's attended and watched this, uh, even if you've only watched the recording, we're gonna take 50% off of the setup fee. Again, because we're so confident that once you get on board with this tool, um, that it's, it's gonna be something that, you know, becomes such a, a indispensable, uh, way that you operate your your marketing operation and um, again we're that confident in it we, we want to give that incentive out obviously you know we're, we're still dealing with COVID-19 we know that uh, some companies are feeling the pinch and, and want to be able to extend that offer uh, so obviously that includes installing the visitor ID uh, setting up the life of the lead which uh, probably my favorite feature in this tool and then set up all your contact forms so if you've got your main contact form you want to run some automations off of that if you've got some lead magnets set up where you know you got you know some downloadable pieces or or maybe even some video series that you want people to watch, um, all that will go ahead and tie in and, and waive fifty percent of our fees. And you got my contact information there, and um, Tim as well. You know, will um, Sharp Spring will will do everything they can to, to get you up and running. Um, so if you're interested, even in just getting a demo set up, just reach out to us. We'd uh, we'd love to get that in place for you. Um, and, and Tim, thank you so much again for for attending this and, and helping me out, and just the entire team. You know, it's been um, I don't know, half a dozen people I've, I've been in contact with 
you know, every week on, on, you know, getting the different things we need in place and really just appreciate that so much, man. And, um, again, look forward Absolutely to continue working with you and, and hopefully we can uh, bring some people on board and get them connected to you. And, uh, anything you want to leave everyone with? Uh, no, you know, I, I think that you've really summed up everything really quite well. Uh, I just want to say that, you know, this is one of the things that I love doing with SharpSpring is working with our partners and helping them uh, be successful. And I look forward to seeing all of the folks who uh, who get connected with Broadbase and are able to come on board and begin to really experience a lot of tools that, you know, maybe historically are a little bit out of reach because of the cost. They're now actually something that you can approach, that you can feel confident knowing that you have a strong uh, marketing automation solution and a strong agency partner to work with. Definitely. We appreciate that, Tim. And I'll, I'll go ahead and plug SharpSpring as well. Obviously, the website is sharpspring.com. Super simple to find it. Uh, every Wednesday, Tim, you're doing the agency series, which I think anybody can attend, right? You don't have to be a partner. Yeah, we're doing a uh, prospect web series. So you can come in and check out. Uh, our CEO is doing a weekly roundtable with uh, different folks talking about how, how to get through COVID and how uh, businesses can come out on the other side. So definitely a, uh, a resource and series that I would recommend checking out. Yeah, I watch it every week. It's even, it's recorded, so I make sure I watch the recording. It's been very, very helpful. And you, know, you mentioned Rick, he's their CEO, who I've had the pleasure of meeting personally and, and hearing him speak. And I think the way he sums up Sharp Spring is you deliver the right content to the right person at the right time. Uh, so if I could sum up this entire webinar, I mean, this is the kind of tool that, you know, again, the way that we buy things and, and how, especially now with, with everything going on, we're not going to be as, you know, um, you know, gung-ho about, you know, going in and, and meeting with everybody and talking to everybody. A lot of this is going to be done remotely as we're seeing and uh, SharpSpring is tailor-made to be able to do that. So uh, I hope everybody that watched this got a ton of value out of it. I um, hope you take advantage and you know, reach out to us and, and get some more information. We'd be happy to help. And again, thanks for tuning in and thank you, Tim, for, uh, for helping me out with this. Thanks, Chris, for having me. Everyone have a great day. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.